anytime I listen to their music, and it might have a lot to do with that bass tone, but it feels like I'm wrapped in a warm, fuzzy blanket, like right out of the dryer. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lowen University. Today, we're finally getting to Incubus. I'm going to be checking out Are You In? This is from their fourth album, Morning View, released in 2001. I've really only ever heard anything from Make Yourself. Drive was one of the first songs I heard. One of my bands a long time ago covered The Warmth, but I've never listened to anything else other than Make Yourself and songs from that album. I'm reading that this is the last album to feature bassist Dirk Lance, who was a founding member. So let's jump in. Are You In? by Incubus. Wide panned ambiance. Ambient ambiance, I should have said. Is that bass already? A, B. Some fourths. He's playing fourths there. Some Steve Miller band stuff there. All right, we're right in the pocket, right off the bat. Woo! Love that little pickup note lick thing. We're going from D down to A down to F sharp. And he's swinging it in such a way. I want to listen to it a little bit more and I'll kind of talk about that. Such a warm, warm bass tone. Anytime I listen to their music, and it might have a lot to do with that bass tone, but it feels like I'm wrapped in a warm, fuzzy blanket, like right out of the dryer. That's the that's the production Incubus gives me. It's got this kind of dry, the bass tone gives me the warm and fuzzies. Brandon Boyd's voice is silky. It's kind of like he's right in your ear. And I love their delivery. And this bass line is setting the entire vibe of the song. It doesn't sound like it's in like a, a 12 8 kind of meter where it's going one to the one to the one to the one to the, but he's certainly swinging it with a lot of open notes. He's going from D down to A down to F, and he's doing a lot of chromatic passing tones to kind of give it that rolling feeling where it's not so stark, which contributes to that kind of warm, just relaxing vibe the song is giving so far. And, but when I say swinging, it's just taking two eighth notes instead of going one, two, one, two, it's going. Really, it's got that boppy, it's really doing a lot of long notes, stopping it short, kind of lining up with the, the transients of the, the kick drum and the snare. Real pocket stuff. Let's keep going. Okay, the drums are going digga 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 one to the one to the one to the one to the. So it might be in a 12 8 kind of meter, you know, 12 8 or 4 4 with triplets. It's all kind of one and the same. I'm going to go back and kind of get this chorus part where he's singing, Are You In? No real guitar riff, no real guitar riff yet. The bass is kind of carrying that chord progression, which means it could really be anything. The guitar is really contributing to this atmospheric, a lot of effects. I'm hearing it panned really wide left and right, a lot of delay and reverb. Uh, just really mastering, or I should say, they are masters of this sort of sonic, really, really uh, evoking an emotion, a vibe. I just feel relaxed, as I always do. And I know they had kind of a heavier. Uh, new metal? Do people call Incubus new metal? I, I've seen that. I heard that before. Maybe it's to do with the era they came up in, but this is 
you know, I've known that they've kind of transitioned to more of this more dynamic sound as their years went on. Um, at least what I was told. On a guitar. Yeah, listen to that bass feel. Really swinging it, dancing around the tonic, which is D, sounds like we're in D major. Doing a lot of chromatic passing tones, fifths, octaves, anything to kind of swing around and get to that tonic note really quickly. And that little fill kind of sums up the entire vibe so far. Listen. Sounds like it was kind of like that. See, now if I played that straight, it would be. Actually, it's kind of hard to play it straight when I can only hear it swung. doing that thing a lot really gives it a really bouncy feel it's tasty right in the pocket there And this is important bass player stuff here too as well. You'll notice when it gets to the chorus, there's more background vocals coming in, or the guitar is coming a bit more into the spotlight. He abandons that kind of swing, ad-libbing bass feel kind of thing and goes back to a more straight feel, as the drums do as well. It's a really common formula with bass players to kind of dance around a little bit in the verses. You know, the verse is the time for the vocals to shine. Maybe the guitar uh, simplifies the riff. We kind of tighten up and pull it back center. But there's a little room for the bass player to add some fills every fourth bar, every second bar. And the chorus is when you kind of bring it all together and, and straighten out. And everybody pulls back their ornamental playing, and we're just here to support that hook or that melody. Because the chorus is ultimately what the song is about. So you'll notice he goes from that... Now he's just kind of going straight here. Keep it on the root notes. Really subtle stuff that completely makes or breaks the way the chorus and the hook come along in a song. That was a really interesting, like, upbeat over the bar line kind of thing there. Uh, 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 uh kind of lose the one there. It's kind of a cool little tasty thing. Let me see if I can catch that right here. Right here. Good stuff. the way Brandon's voice like when he harmonizes I don't know if there's someone else harmonizing with him but I, his voice just sounds so good when it's stacked with anybody it's like his is I don't know there's something about the timbre of his voice just very very silky I love it I love when he blends in as these harmonies they kind of went to a different key here or a different chord inside the key so if I guess if we're in D major F sharp minor he kind of went to the two uh, we're kind of an E minor now I heard a lot of A and B <laughs> And it opened up this just really like psychedelic, I don't know how else to describe it. The guitar's got like this flanger going on here. The bass is kind of gluing it all together in the middle. And those background vocals are just set right on top, just giving it this whole different vibe. Because the whole song has been kind of open, right? Guitar has been very minimal. The bass is that glue in the middle. And then it opened up with all these layers. And something that's super important to note here is that if you're writing a song, 
you know, common rock and metal, it's all about layers. Everybody wants more layers, more harmonies. People are adding strings. People are adding God knows what. That stuff isn't effective if it's always there. You know, if everything's big and intense, then nothing is big and intense. So the way they started out this song kind of stripped down and here in like the bridge section, they're adding in these layers, it impacts, it will impact you way more differently, way more intensely. And I just got the smiles listening to that. I'm going to go back and jump into that. Interesting bass walking there. I didn't talk about that little fill, but he did this in the very intro of the song, right? The first thing the bass played in this song, other than those... Little swing. He did it again here. But let me go back and talk about the bass. It's kind of more walking. He's kind of straying away from that swung kind of pattern. He's kind of actually walking the changes, very jazz-like. And the whole thing sounds like it's over an E minor chord. That's just the pedal tone going on. The, uh, you know, the guitar, you know, the vocals are going G, E, F sharp, E. So it's very uh, part in E minor. And the bass is staying on some of these other notes long enough to kind of create a few cluster chords and just giving the chords a different flavor. And that's kind of the thing about being a bass player. We're the lowest note in the composition. So if everybody's on G and I just play an E, it's a whole different chord now because I'm the lowest note. I'm dictating the entire chord. And I'm not saying that's a conscious effort to change the chord progression, but it, it can kind of add some variation because when you just stay on one chord a long time, it might become a little, you might lose the listener a little bit. And that, that's super hypothetical in case-by-case -case basis. But just changing the bass notes a little bit, kind of hovering around it, is super important to kind of make the make a one chord progression sound like a four chord progression. You can kind of hear, um, one more time, listen to the E minor and listen to how the those bass notes kind of change the way it kind of comes across. <laughs> Now we're back to where we started. Ghost Note City right here. Remember Warm Blanket? That's how I feel. And something else about this bass tone, the Incubus songs I've heard, the bass tone has been really fat. Like, I can't think of a warmer bass tone in rock. I mean, I'm sure there, there's other tones and other bands like this, but I always know when Incubus comes on, I'm able to like really hear the bass. I really feel it. And you know, some bass players have their tone where you can really hear it. It's serving kind of like a, a powerful element in the mix where you're just, it's like really supporting the guitar, like the riff, the distortion on the guitar, or it's really inside that kick drum. This is just like the foundation for the whole song. It's like the whole song is just nested under this bass, above this bass tone. I should say the bass tone is below the song. And that's why I keep saying the warm and fuzzies. It's just giving this fat bottom end. And what's really interesting to me is to get a bass tone like that, it's very hard to fight with that in a mix. If you've ever done any audio mixing or you're trying to master a song and kind of get it loud, but you can't, or it kind of sounds washed out, it's usually because the low end is fighting somewhere. The low end takes up a lot of headroom. Usually when you can't get your mix loud enough, it's because the low end is fighting. It's the low mids, like 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 300 hertz. And carving some of that out frees up a lot of headroom. 
but this bass tone still has that bottom end, so there must be a, a really smart, perfectly dialed in compressor to kind of let that high end dynamic come out. You can kind of hear the finger scrapes a bit, but something, maybe a multiband compressor on the low end, kind of taming it in such a way that allows it to still sound natural and fat, but not crowd the song out and crowd the mix out. So, you know, those bass tones are hard to mix in, at least in my experience. I'm not a pro audio engineer, but I've done enough to know that like, man, every time there's something wrong with my mix, I got to like pull some low end out of something. Could be the kick, could be anything. But it sits in so well and it's not ever boomy. It's just full, full, fat, warm, with a side of fuzzies. Let's round this thing out. Back to the more straight kind of thing. Ending the way we started. Chromatic, sort of falling. This is an excellent example of how the bass can make or break a song. And in, you know, some genres, the bass is there just to round out the sound from a sonic perspective. We all know that. We all know those songs where it's like, is the bass there? I kind of hear it, just it's part of the guitar tone. But I love bands like this where it's clearly the focal point of the song. It's clearly almost like a lead role. There's no riff. There's no guitar riff in this song. It's completely carried by that bass line. And the way Dirk Lance had so much variance between the note lengths. Swung, really stopping short with the snare drum. Like right on a snare, he'd cut a note off and do a little chromatic lead in. Passing tones just contribute to the absolute relaxing vibe of the song. I love it. I love the sonic presentation. Um, I need to go back and listen to more. And the more I listened to this song, I thought, I think I've heard some stuff off Light Grenades, like maybe Dig. But nonetheless, it's been a very long time since I've sat down and listened to Incubus, and I, this is the first time I heard this one. This was great. Um, I assume the next bass player is kind of carrying the torch with this band. Um, if I should do any other Incubus featuring the other guy on the newer records, please let me know in the comments. Please like the video. I appreciate you guys hanging out, and thanks for requesting some Incubus. I got this one quite a few times many months ago. I'm just getting to it, so thanks for your patience. Please hit the subscribe button, and... I can't thank you guys enough as always. Cheers. Until next time.